Hello everyone, today I'm working on a Henny Penny HMR 107 hot case. Uh, what's happening is we're blowing the breaker as soon as we turn it on. So we had tons of grease in there. Uh, I cleaned out what I could as best as I could. It's really sticky stuff. Uh, most of the wiring is no longer covered in the grease. So let's move on here. So as you can see here, we have 208 in. And as soon as I turn on power here, our breaker is tripping immediately. You can see we have zero volts here now. We have a dead short. All right, so let's start by pulling up a schematic. This is a three-phase schematic here. We just change L3 to L2. It becomes our one-phase schematic. So what we're finding is as soon as we're powering up, this power switch right here, these contacts close. Okay, we're dead shorting. Okay, so let's just kind of go through our sequence really quickly. So we're coming through here, through here, and then we're hitting up our canopy fans. And if we continue down the line here, we're hitting up all our lighting. Okay, I'm not going to draw all these lines, so all the lighting's in the circuit. And then we're hitting up all of our relays for our lower elements. So let's just kind of draw all these in. And then we're coming through here, our cooling fans in the canopy, and then we're hitting up everything in this circuit here. So our blower motors, and then our contactor coil. That's our L1 side. Okay, these are all the loads we're kind of looking at. Now our L2 side, we're coming through here, same thing. We're gonna hit up our canopy fans. So this whole section here could have a short in it. And then our contactor coil. And then we come through here and we're going straight shotting into these elements. Okay, and then as well, our L2 is branching off here. It's coming down to our water bath elements. And then it's also straight shotting to all of our radiant heaters. Or sorry, all of our base heaters. So I'm going to start by disconnecting uh, this contactor coil. We could have a bad contactor. The, co the coil could be shorting out. And then once we disconnect that, it's going to... Uh, eliminate a lot of loads. So let's start by doing that. Um, we obviously don't want to go disconnect all these loads one by one. Uh, that would take forever. Okay, we want to try to troubleshoot this the more most efficient way possible and the quickest way possible. So let's go disconnect our contactor coil and go from there. All right, so I'm going to disconnect. All right, so let's check for power here. We do have 208 in. And as soon as we turn on our power, and you can hear something squealing down there. So we obviously have power. We did not trip the breaker, which is really good news. So we've isolated about half the circuit. So that's made our troubleshooting that much easier. So let's just go down here and you can see that's the one squealing. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be dead shorting. So I'm not too worried about that. So I disconnected that fan just to see if that's what was shorting. I don't think that'll pop a breaker, but let's just see here. So you can see we have 208 and let's fire up. And we have zero volts. So we're still dead shorting here. It was not that far blower motor, okay. Let me disconnect this coil one more time. I just want to test this coil really quickly. Make sure it's not the source of our short. And you ohm it out and we're at about you know, 700 ohms. That's pretty good for this contactor. So the issue is not in this contactor coil. Okay, so the next thing now, I'm going to test the ground. And I'm getting a dead short to ground. Okay. 
All right, so when I tested my L1 side here on the on the outlet of the contactor, I had a dead short to ground. I see this mistake get made a lot and people will chase this short here, okay? So why we're getting a short to ground here, what's happening is we're coming into here into our light circuit, okay? So we're hitting up our lights. And then if you look on the other side, which is our neutral. So we do have a neutral in this circuit. This gets complicated, okay? We have a neutral right here, okay? A neutral will give you continuity to ground. So what's happening is this neutral is coming through the light and it's back feeding up through here. So I see people do this a lot and I get a lot of phone calls for this saying, hey, I'm getting a short to ground. And I always ask, is there a neutral in the circuit? Okay, in this case, yes, there is. There's a light in the circuit. Okay, so that's why we're getting uh, continuity to ground here. So this is not the correct way to test. Okay, we have to remove the wires and isolate them. All right, so as you saw there, I disconnected the wiring to this contactor coil right here, okay? So what does that mean if I disconnect that contactor coil? It means the short has to be on this circuit here, okay? Because as soon as I disconnected that contactor coil, all these loads were running and all these loads were running. So that means none of my canopy fans are shorting or any of the wiring, okay? None of my lower blower motors are shorting um, and blowing the breaker, okay? So I've just, put the blinders on and I've just eliminated this entire section of the circuit right here. Okay. So I can literally just go like this and I can literally just go like this. And I just eliminated this entire section of the circuit. That's from removing two wires. Okay. So this is how we're working efficiently. This is how we're working quickly. Okay. So this is what we want to do. We want to put the blinders on. We don't, we don't want to go test every uh, section of the circuit. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do now is because we were getting a dead short here, okay, we're going to isolate the circuit, okay? So there's three wires on my main contactor on the L1 side. If we look at my L1 side, what is it feeding? It's coming through here, okay? It's, it's, it's feeding the lights. We know the lights are not an issue. It's feeding these relays, okay? What are the chances that the relay is shorting out? It could be the wiring, but it's not very likely. But if we go to our L2 side, okay, look at this. It's a straight shot to these elements once that contactor coil closes, okay? So most likely, my short is going to be on the left-hand side, or sorry, on the L2 side. Doesn't mean it's 100% going to be, but in this case, we're just going to play the odds. Let's go to the most common places where the short would happen. It's probably not going to be on these relays. I'm not saying it can't be. So if you look on my L2 contactor, there's three wires going to it. Okay, and based on those three wires, we're going to test and see where the short is going to be. All right, so let's go to our contactor, our L2. We have two red and an orange. So the first red, LA25, we are getting 12 ohms to ground. We have a short there. Our orange, two mega ohm, we don't have a short there. And our last wire is going to be, if I can get on there. There we go. 19 ohms. So there's two wires that are giving us a dead short. Okay. So we've just narrowed everything down to now two sections of the schematic. And we'll try to kind of trace this wire back up. But it looks like that one is going into the element there. And then our other wire is coming up through here. And it is feeding our light circuit. All right, so as you saw there, we have three wires, okay? So one is coming down to our, our top radiant heaters. We did not have a short there. So guess what? I don't have to test anything in this circuit right here. So I do not have to test anything in this circuit right here. Put the blinders on. Okay, what's remaining? Let's get a little zoom action here. Okay, one wire was for our canopy lights right here. So here's our canopy lights, which we figured out. Okay, we know we're going to have uh, a short on the lights. Why? Because it's going to our neutral all the way over here. So guess what? Short's probably not in this section. Okay, put the blinders on one more time. So what does that leave now? 
and we have one wire left. Well, we know where that's going to, our base heaters, okay? So we literally only have to check these base heaters, okay? So we just eliminated the entire circuit, okay? So let's go check our base heaters. Let's see where the short is. It's either gonna be in the wiring to it or one of these elements. All right, so let's go ahead and check our base heaters here. So first one here, 69 ohms. And we want to test it to ground. And we got open line to ground. Right, we'll test our second uh, base heater in the bottom here. So obviously disconnect both leads off it. And we'll alligator clamp one side. And we'll test over to the other side. And it's ohming out. Decently 65 ohms, but to ground, we're also getting 65 ohms. So it looks like this element is the one that has the short. So let's go take a peek here. We got kind of an arc mark there, so maybe grounding inside of that insulation. But yeah, okay, well, there's our problem right there. Uh, you can see it's, it's actually welded itself to the frame. That's gonna be our dead short. That's why we're popping the paper, for sure. So let's just go take a peek in here, move some of these things out of the way, and see what happened. Let's see here, flip the camera around if I can. And you can see, yeah, that's supposed to be screwed in. The screw's missing, obviously. So probably when they're cleaning, this thing probably shorted out. And let's see if we can kind of snap it off the frame there. All right, there we go. And you can see right there the arc mark. So we are going to need another element. But that's definitely the cause of the short. All right, so I disconnected that element. I just want to fire up the unit, make sure there's no other issues. We're getting three amps on the elements. So uh, we're going to get an element. Uh, the far right blower motor. I'm going to change this contactor as well. But we found the dead short. Um, we are all good here. 